So one of the last ones that we're going to look at here is going to be shape for the analysis. And so in the shape you're actually looking at the dot plot, so that's what you're going to kind of take a look at. So use the dot plots to examine this. And one thing I really want to make sure you guys don't do is um, don't over describe the shape. Okay, stick to one or two key features in it. I do not need to hear about a shape that is um, skewed to the right, slightly normal with the bimodal peaks and has outliers and is sort of uniformly shaped. So basically if you say something like that you've contradicted yourself on almost everything you possibly can. We're keeping it really simple so don't over describe your shape. So a few things that we're going to talk about. Um, these ones would be skews. So you can think about a normal curve would be a symmetrical bell curve about the median or the mean. And so it's relatively equal on both sides of the other. When you've got a skew, you look for the direction that it's been yanked on, the direction that it's been pulled. So here we would say skew to the right, and here we would say skewed to the left. So if you see a dot plot with a tail going off to the left, you could say skewed left. And if you feel see a dot plot with a tail going off to the right, you would say skewed right. Um, other key features that we can talk about would be something about how many modes there are. So modes have to do with our peaks. Basically a unimodal means one peak or an, you know, normalish graph if it is normal. And bimodal would be two peaks, and if there's three peaks you'd have trimodal, but um, often these work out to be um, usually relatively normal. So here this would be, I would say, relatively normal. And by saying relatively normal I'm implying there's just one peak. This one I would say bimodal. And the relatively normal should cover most things. So that's probably the one that you're going to use the most or be talking about the most. And then maybe you mention if there's a skew one way or the other or if there's a particular um, unusual peak or outlier. So if we take a look at our graphs for our um, rugby players here. Let's start with the back, so that's pretty simple. One thing you can do is sort of draw yourself a, a line over the top if you want. That is relatively normal. Um, it's not perfect, it's never going to be perfect, but there's one peak sort of towards the middle and not as many on the extremes. So that's one thing to remember with your normals. One peak in middle near the mean and a few extreme values you know, or less extreme values as you go further out. So on the backs I would say that's relatively normal. On the forwards, yeah, it's kind of all over the place, but that's alright. So if I kind of loosely draw a, sh a shape over the top of these guys, um, the peak is pretty distributed because there's quite a few of them in there, but one thing I notice is that it does appear to be somewhat skewed because there is a long tail going off to the right. And, you know, there's lots of peaks in there, but I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's like a four peak problem or, you know, double bimodal or anything. Here I'm probably just going to say it's kind of relatively normal, um, but skewed to the right, and just keep it simple. So here the forwards weights appear to be skewed to the right. So we saw that long tail off to the right whereas the back's weights seem reasonably symmetrical or what I could say is relatively normal here or relatively normal with one peak in the middle there and the backs also appear to be unimodal whereas the forwards are potentially bimodal um, yeah I might not even go so far as to say that just say that the forwards are um, you know have more variation or um, potential of multiple little peaks and not go so far as to say exactly what or where they are. So don't over describe it and just keep looking for those kind of key features like two distinct modes, two distinct peaks, or something skewed to the left or right or a normal situation. Um, and the last one that we can look at is other observations. Uh, and this sometimes comes back into the shape stuff. 
So any unusual features that we notice on the data sets could be outliers or extreme values or anything else um, that we notice, like two big peaks. If it was bimodal, we could talk about the bimodal. So if you had a graph that looked like this, it might be interesting to say why there are two peaks. You know, I don't know. Or if you have a graph and then you've got a single point or a cluster of points really, really far away and everything else is stacked in, then you might want to say, okay, well, you know, those are also unusual. So other observations kind of go with unusual features. So if we look up at our graph, we do see that we had, you know, this tail skewed to the right for the forwards with some really extremely big values. So what we can say about this kind of information, if we look at those graphs, is looking at the graph, I can see the forwards have one player that weighs more than most of the other forwards. He is a New Zealander. You can go back and look on your data set to find that out. At 137 and 1.8 meters tall. This could be because he's a stockier player that is quite large with more muscle, causing him to weigh more. And the minimum for forwards weights is higher than the upper quartile weights for the, uh, weights for the backs. This shows 100% of the forwards weights lie above the upper quartile of the backs. That's just kind of going back to how far spread out this data is. I mean, how far shifted this data is. So if you look at this, they're just saying that the minimum here is past the upper quartile of the backs, and that's just indicating again how much shift there is. So that's not a statement that you would need to make every single time. Um, it's just kind of relative to this situation. So lots of shift is basically what that's getting at. And something to keep in mind, like we've all modeled here, um, it's good to give yourself a possible explanation if you can. So go and examine that outlier, look it up, kind of like you guys did with Gallup or some of the other outliers in the previous data sets. Um, you know, can you explain potentially why that's such a big value? And in this case, we've got a giant rugby player, you know, but it's all right. The sport has really stocky, massive players in it from time to time. But maybe you could find out exactly who he is or, or anything like that. So if you do have a possible explanation for it, go for it, but you don't you don't have to know, like you don't have to know exactly why there is an extreme value.